on News 18. Sports from where you live. Welcome to the Friday Night Frenzy. I'm Ross Bowen. Rob Hughes is on assignment playing golf in Mexico. Ruben Juarez will join me later in the show. Sectional basketball resumed tonight throughout the state of Indiana. And we begin at Lafayette Jeff, where the 14th ranked McCutcheon Mavericks were taking on the Kokomo Wildcats in a win or go home game for the fourth straight season. My apologies to the Maverick fans for being late to the party. Under four minutes to go and Kokomo trying to make a comeback. That put back makes it a three point game. Cats trying to run the full court press. Maverick shred the defense. I was hoping for a Darnell Butler dunk. I'll settle for the lay in. It would stay a one possession game for a few more minutes, but eventually the Mavs would push the lead out. It's Butler again off the steal. Here's the press breaker, leads to a Darnell bucket. Even I could make that one. Kokomo didn't stick around, the Kokomo coach didn't stick around to watch the end of this one. Coach Moore, he's headed to the locker room. Two tees in a matter of 20 seconds. McCutcheon advances to the final 63 to 53. In game two, Cade Renneker and the Harrison Raiders taking on Jalen Attaway and the Logan Sport Berries. Both teams got off to a good start. Alex Brink drives baseline. He's going to get the hoop. And the foul, and ladies and gentlemen, he is fired up. At the other end, Isaiah Carpenter making sure he didn't get cheated if tonight was his last game. Silky smooth spin move. Second quarter, Barry's pushed the lead out. Matt Jennings splits the defense and floats it over. Carpenter, Whitney would be proud of that finish in traffic. Third quarter, the game got a little chippy. Mark Reinhardt teed up for trying to stop a little chatter. Raiders playing hard for their coach. Carpenter with the nice pass and an even better finish. My fault for underestimating his hops. And speaking of hops, how about an alley-oop? It's Jalen Attaway. Good night, Gracie. Slam dunk. Moments later, A.J. Smith goes coast to coast. Harrison calls the timeout. Too little, too late. Logan Sport advances 84-70, the final. Over in Peru, Twin Lakes and Northwestern. Second half action. Off a of Tigers miss, Riley Hudson gets the offensive board and scores. But check this out. Matt Bunnell drops back and finds Bryce Bennington running the nine route. He gets the hoop and the foul, just like Coach Adams had it drawn up. Indians up 10. Later, Twin Lakes moving the ball around and swinging it over to Bunnell. He butters the biscuit. Tigers looking to get back in this one. Junior Austin Miller. He's going to go behind the back and drains the mid-range jumper. But Twin Lakes just had it going on tonight. Justin Crabb. He's going to get the cookies moments later and dishes it up court to Bennington for the and one. This was a close game down the stretch, but the Indians take this one. Final score, 58-50. to 50. In the second semifinal at Peru, Benton Central taking on Western. First quarter action, Bison running a little give and go. Jack Marquis gets the bucket and the foul. He's just too strong, folks. A few possessions later, it's Marquis finding Henry Fisher on the block. He scores the easy two. We see playing a, with a lot of confidence. Later, Bison working the ball around to Fisher. He drives and scores another lay-in and extends the BC lead. Nicely done. Nobody stops the basketball. Western trying to get back in this one. Only the ball ricochets off the head of a Panther. Bison capitalized on the turnover. Marquee with the lay-in. BC, they advance 54-45. Over at North Vermillion, Central Catholic facing Turkey Run. Third quarter, Knights finding Jackson Anthrop in the corner. Action Jackson with the baseline drive and finishes with the tough bucket. The Jack Show, CC up 23. Turkey Run looking to respond. Austin Jones gets hacked but still gets the hoop and the foul off the window later on. CC's Michael Vukas dumps it inside to Joe Corcoran for the layup. The Knights advance, blowout city 74-43. In the second game at North Vermillion, the host Falcons facing Attica. North Vermillion with the great dish to Zach Vukas down low for the easy bucket off the glass. The Red Ramblers respond. Kenny Little receives the pass and hits the double pump runner right down the lane. Little now doing the assisting. He, sh he likes to share, folks. He drives baseline, finds Keaton Arnold for the basket to put Attica on top. The Red Ramblers edge the Falcons 47-46. Six games down, nine to go, including stops at Frankfurt, Delphi, and Tri-Central, where Carroll, Clinton Prairie, Faith Christian, Rossville, all in action. The Frenzy will be right back. 
Welcome back to the Frenzy. Three weeks ago, North Montgomery and Frankfurt squared off at Case Arena. The Hot Dogs won that game 64-55. to Tonight, the Chargers got a second chance. This time, a win would not only send the Dogs home with their tail between their legs, but advance the Chargers to the sectional finals for the first time since March of 2009. Frankfurt's Luis Medina getting the Case Arena crowd pumped up, but it was the Chargers that came out inspired. Check out the nice hesitation dribble from North Montgomery's Caleb Randolph as he gets the layup to go. Later on, Randolph finds Grant Gaylor, the 6'6 senior, drives it inside, hits the floater. The Chargers jumped out to an early 8-3 lead. The Dogs, they bark back though. Medina feeds it to Carter Taylor who backs his way into the paint and hits the basket off the window. Coach Jared Katrin likes what he sees. Dogs are out on the run now. Randolph gives it to Medina who brings it up court and hits the pull-up jumper from the charity stripe. Medina had it going in the first quarter for the Hot Dogs. 10 seconds to go in the first. Jared Smith swings it over to Medina and he cans the three ball. Frankfurt wins 71-64 and will face Lebanon tomorrow. Let's head to Delphi, game one. Rensselaer, my dad's school versus North Newton. Second half action, Grant Myers throws it ahead to Devin DeWeese and he soars to the rack for the Dukes. Other end now, Jonathan Bigger finds Dylan Catlett, who is bigger and better from mid-range, but North Newton trailed big at that point. Rensselaer ball again, Thomas Clawson catches it in the post and finishes with the left soft touch from the big man. Later on, North Newton's Jake Cooper gets the steal and takes it himself. The Spartans still battling, but the bomb squad had an answer for everything. Here they swing it over to Ben Hillen, and he launches a land to air rocket from deep. Rensselaer drops a bomb on North Newton, winning 55 to 25. Thank you, Paul Zink, for all of those zingers. This is the second game. Delphi taking on Winnemac. Delphi came out strong as Tyler Ross, a.k.a. T. Ross, drives and gets the bucket to go and the foul. Later on, senior Adam Shanks drives and finds an open Mason Lane in the corner. He knocks it down. Lane hit about 53 tonight. Monster game for the senior. Warrior Parker Fox steals it, goes behind the back, gets the oop, the hoop, and the harm. Winnemac would take a nine-point halftime lead up 20 points at that point. But Delphi wasn't done. Brent Hahn comes off the Adam Shank screen and drains it. He's hit a few of those in his career. Delphi cut the lead to eight in transition. Here goes the alley, and there goes the oop from half-court Fox getting airborne again. Winnemac wins this one, 77-55. We're now moving on to the Tri-Central sectional. The Carroll Cougars got a first-round bye and open up play against a familiar foe. For more on tonight's game, He's not off on vacation. We welcome in Sports 18's Ruben Juarez. Hey, Ruben. Thanks, Ross. Carroll going up against Clinton Prairie. The Cougars and Gophers split their two meetings earlier this season. Clinton Prairie down early, but their fans are there to support them. Down 22 to 11, Merritt McGraw. No relation to Tim. The no look pass to Chase Joseph, who finds Jacob Price from downtown to start the comeback. Moments later, the Gophers bring in the full court press. Jared Stibble going to get the steal, and after some quick passing, he finds Kill Morris, who brings the Gophers within two. Timeout, Carroll. The Cougars wanting to talk it over, and they come out strong. The big man, Jaron Bush, going to nail the jumper. There he goes. Jaron going to knock down the J, and this would not be the last that we saw of the big fella. Again, it's Bush, this time from down low. He's going to spin left and finish with the right. Close game down the stretch, but the Cougars would outlast the Gophers and win it 45-40. to Winner of this matchup will face the winner of Faith Christian going up against Rossville. Rossville starts us off with a smooth jumper from the big man, Clayton Howard, who puts the Hornets up 7-2. Howard again making his presence felt as Neil Beery would miss. Howard gets the board and gets the putback. Hornets still leading. Faith trying to keep it close. Man Dutton drives and puts up the floater. It goes. The senior knocks things up at 13, but down the stretch, Rossville would be too strong. Enrique Rangel gets the steal, and look at that clean rip from the junior. He finishes at the other end. The Hornets would finish the Eagles off 60-45 to and move on to the final against Carroll. Let's go to the West Central High School. Game one has Pioneer taking on South New in third quarter. South New and Skylar Sanders puts up the crazy shot and banks it in. 
Later, Pioneers Keith Nyes curls around and nails the three ball. Then it's the Panthers' Caleb Kindley finding the seam and he drives it home. The Rebels staying in it, John Dafchik stops and pops and hits. Pioneer with too many answers tonight, Kindley gets the lay in and then they kick it out to Devin Smith for the three ball. Pioneer advances to the final 52 to 44. Game two pitting Tri-County against the cast and Comet. First quarter Tri-County's Elijah Legler gets the inbounds pass and nails a short jumper. Later it's Kasten's Dustin Offenberger with a nice baseline drive and he lays it in. But Tri-County too much tonight. Austin Schneider splashes in the long three and later it's Schneider with a circus shot. It rims out but Blake Justice is there for the board. Flips it over to Ben Cook for the lay-in. Tri-County rolls 70-42. to They will take on Pioneer tomorrow night. Back to you, Ross. You're the man, Ruben, picking up game one at Southmont, where the Mounties taking on Seeger. But the big man, Caleb Swick, gets it out to Nathan Truncone for a three from downtown. Here's a little more from Truncone. He gets tripped up as he gets a nice no-look pass to Jared Todd in the corner for a big-time three ball. On the inbounds play, Joshua Orahood takes the defense out of the equation. He launches it way down the floor to Jordan Bailiff, who puts up the jumper. The Mounties fight hard on their home court, but they fall to the Patriots 62 to 54. Staying at Southmont, game two of the night. Fountain Central versus Riverton Park. To set the tone, Corey Clayton is gonna intercept a slow pass from RP's Caleb Dickey. He takes it all the way in for the easy bucket right there. Riverton Park's Hunter's fall gets a quick pass from outside the arc and gets the floater to go. Fountain Central working the paint for the rebound. Ethan Woodrow gets it, whips it to Kobe Pierce, who legs out the Panther defense for an easy two. Fountain Central wins and knocks off Riverton Park with an E, 63 to 35. They'll play Seeger in the championship game tomorrow at seven o'clock. It's that time of the night. Coming up after the break, we will be catching up with Twin Lakes head coach, Kent Adams, the Indians. Picked up a win tonight over Northwestern. We'll hear from Coach next. The Frenzy will be right back. All right, welcome back to the Frenzy, making his first appearance on the show this season. Twin Lakes head coach Ken Adams. Coach, big win tonight. They're always big when it's winter go home. Absolutely. Tournament time is uh, very special. What was the difference tonight? They cut it to two late, and then you pushed it back out to eight was the final Obviously, you guys solved some things down the stretch to get the win. Well, we uh, we were kind of uh, pressing a little bit and, and a little nervous, and uh, Dane Holmes did a couple big shots uh, to uh, give us a little bit of advantage, and then from there we kept our composure, made our free throws, and uh, kept them from scoring. And Matt Bennell got some love tonight and <laughs> should be credited to Dane Holmes. When you see that play, when he throws it down court, what are you thinking? Well, he's done that numerous times this year. Uh, he's got a great arm, and uh, you know he's a pitcher in baseball, and, and uh, we've got some good athletes, some receivers in football. So they've played together before, and, and kind of have a knack to, to find pick, find each other. And it's just a backbreaker too. When the other team will score and get close, and then boom, right back you uh, you know score two or three, and uh, it's like it didn't even happen. Coach, I'm I'm being told I talked too much tonight, so we got about 20 seconds left. Tomorrow against Benton Central, what's going to be the key for you guys? Uh, just a just a great uh, effort right now by Benton Central to get to this point. They've got a lot of athleticism, a lot of great uh, kids there, and uh, they're they're just playing well right now. They've they've hit a stretch, and you, you see it every year a team that uh, can come out and make a difference in the regular season. So uh, it's just, I anticipate a great game. Great game with the Bison tomorrow. Head coach Ken Adams, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. I wouldn't uh, want to spend my last frenzy with <laughs> anybody but another UND Greyhound, that's for sure. That just about does it for tonight's show. From the entire Sports 18 team, we hope you've enjoyed another great year of the frenzy. After being a part of over 150 frenzies, tonight will be my last show. A special thanks to our photographers and the entire production staff, past and present, for putting up with me, including my producer, Kate Kelty. I'd like to thank all the coaches, athletic directors, and parents who've made my job easy and a lot of fun as well. I've worked with a lot of great people, including Matt Wetterston, Tiffany Dismore, Caleb Martin, and of course, Mike Clef. I know when the frenzy returns, Robin Rubin won't skip a beat. My last two shows will be tomorrow, and it will be a jam-packed day. We'll have highlights and reaction from the Class A State Championship game at Bankers Life, Purdue's home game against Illinois, and of course, a full night of sectional championship games, including Twin Lakes, versus Benton Central. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.